Hey everyone, uh, Dr. Calkins once again. So today we're at uh, experiment four, noble gases. They again are the role models. That's what everybody wants to be like in the periodic table. So what's nice about this lab is not only does it review some of week two material in the beginning, it then shows you how to move it towards week three material, which is great for getting you ready for our first exam. So I'm gonna work you through, this is a busy lab, so I'm gonna work you through some of the examples, give you time to practice on your own. So in this first section, we're going to recognize elements. A couple things to remember from week two, since it's been a while. Atoms do have the same number of electrons as protons if they're elemental. Ions uh, would change the number of electrons, but there are none of those examples on this front page. Isotopes differ by the number of neutrons. So that column is different, and I purposely chose examples down here that you couldn't cheat off the periodic table to find. The atomic number represents the protons, so that's gonna make these two columns equal. But again, this column and this column, the electrons, those are gonna be the same only because these are elements, not ions. Mass number is the sum of protons and neutrons, so really if we just add these two columns together, that's going to give you the mass number. So this is like a puzzle. They give you just enough clues to sort it out. So in this one, they give you a clue that it is hydrogen. So we'd say, well, that's just uh, element number one. But element number one means that it only has one proton. And that also means in its elemental form, it's only gonna have one electron. The mass of this specific isotope of hydrogen would be one plus two equals three. So again, that is our mass number and how we get it. Hydrogen-3 is the most uh, rare version of hydrogen called tritium. Hydrogen-2, deuterium, and then just uh, hydrogen-1 is hydrogen-1. But this is the radioactive version uh, of hydrogen. I picked it because it wouldn't match anything on the periodic table in its current position. Let's try one more. Atomic number two. So atomic number two just means that we are now helium. It's number two on the periodic table. If it's number two, it also has two protons, but that also means because it's elemental, it has two electrons. And here we also have a very rare form of helium, which would be uh, helium three, because again, we're adding two plus the one to get our three. So if they give you this number, just remember to subtract or add vice versa to finish this section. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that now, so you can hit pause, work through these other examples, and then we'll come back. All right, so as we get to the back page, page 18, we're gonna look at the other number that's on the periodic table. Remember, top number, atomic number is protons, bottom number is atomic weight. So let's calculate weight and show you that it is a weighted average. And the answers we can find here are straight off the periodic table. So we already know before we ever get started that boron is gonna be 10.8, just as it's written on the periodic table. We just need to prove why. So when you do a weighted average, you can't just add these two together and divide by two because you're gonna get 10 and a half and the answer is not 10 and a half. The answer is closer to 11 because there's more of the 11 isotope than the 10 isotope. So these are just the names, don't worry about those. Here's the mass, here's the percentage. When you multiply by a percentage, you have to convert it to a decimal. You have to convert it to a decimal. When you do this in your calculator, you'll get 1.99 and you'll get about 8.811. And this will be added together to give you the answer we got on the periodic table. So the reason that we teach you this, because it's not in the uh, homework of the exam, is to remind you that this number on the bottom of the periodic table is a calculation. Mass numbers are just numbers that exist for isotopes. We have to know these and their percentages and their weights in order to calculate these. So don't confuse the bottom number that has a decimal with these mass numbers that don't. They're very different, but they're very easy for students to uh, confuse. Because sometimes by coincidence, it could be close to 11. That's only because that's a high percentage isotope that exists. So I'll give you a moment to pause it, try uh, carbon below, but we already know its answer if you look on the periodic table. So try that now. 
All right, so now that you had a taste of that, let's move on towards our uh, week three, chapter four material and get us into electron configuration where it's all about the electrons. If it's all about the electrons, we need to see to fill out this datum, very tedious, but remember if this is a 2s1, oh sorry, gave away the answer. This is a 1s1, this is gonna be a 2s1, 3s1. If you go across, it just adds to the superscript, so 2s2, 3s2. 3d1 just means 3d2 is next. 5s2 means 5s1 was before it. 2p1 means eventually this will be a 2p6, just like this is a 3p6. 4f1 will give you 2a, 4f14, just like below it is a 5f14. So there's always clues, just like this is a 5d10, this is a 3d10, to fill out the entire table. But once you have this table finished, you'll have the answers to everything that comes next. So here's your chance to hit pause and fill it in so that we can do the next section. All right, so as we look at page 20, time to practice electron configurations now that we have all the answers on the previous page. So when we look at fluorine on the periodic table, we need to recognize that it has nine electrons. It's number nine after all. Now we just need to get to nine by counting boxes left to right over and over and over again until we land on fluorine. So when we do that, we kind of know the answer right beneath it. We just need to write it and stop at nine. So one S2, uh, two S2, and then when you get to that P box, count over to fluorine. We already know where we need to be, and that's a 2P5. The easiest way to check that is to add these up. 2 plus 2 plus 5 does give us the 9 to check our work. So try a few of those, and we'll come back. All right, in this lower section, we're going to do the noble gas core configurations. We covered both of this briefly in that video before. But I knew this lab was coming up to give you a tremendous amount of practice to help fill in the gaps. So here we have helium. The only thing that's going to have a helium configuration as an element, not an ion, as an element, is helium. And to do helium's configuration, that's one of the smallest. Let's just go to the first row, go to the first section, and fill the two boxes. So that was kind of easy, so let's try another one. Let's try a really tough one like the one on the bottom. Barium. So that one's gonna take you deep into the periodic table. And we already know the answer to most of those ahead of it. We just need to keep going. So we can almost copy this answer above. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So far it went through two noble gases. Here's the helium. Here's the neon. Go to our third row, 3s2, 3p6. There's our third noble gas. We have 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. That's our next noble gas. P6s are always noble gases except for helium that's a 1s2. Still not there yet, need to keep going. 5s2, 4d10, remember those are always one behind, We're running out of room over here, so just scoot it over. 5p6, notice we're back, because S and P's are always on the same level, but these are always one behind. But if we stop here, we stop at xenon, and that's not what we want. We don't want element 54, we want element 56, so we need to go one more row, 6, S, two more boxes. And if we add up all of those, which again that noble gas, add up all of those superscripts, we're going to get barium at 56. Let's trim it though. Find our noble gases, there's one here, there's one there, there's one there, P6 there. P6 there, so let's just take all of these, because that was a huge chunk of our time, and just call it what it is. What it really is, is xenon. So let's write xenon, and our little end of our box should be there. I just ran out of room. And what's left over? What's left over is a 6s2. So that 6s2 goes here. Those two electrons are its valence electrons, and if you have two, you're in Roman numeral two, just like all other alkaline earth metals. So I'll give you a few minutes to fill in the rest and come back. 
All right, so when we have ions, we have two types. We have cations that are positive. Key way to remember that is cats have positive charge, kind of lame, but way students help remember it. Cations are something that's typically metals to come because they lose electrons to be noble gas-like. Opposite of the periodic table is the anions. They like to be negative. Another key way to remember cations is look at the T. It looks like a positive charge. Sometimes that helps. So if metals lose, we need to take away electrons from their configuration to be like a noble gas. And if ions gain, we need to fill their electron configuration. And we'll see that here with lithium. So lithium has a 1s2 and a 2s1. It's got three electrons, so that works. The noble gas is helium, and it has one more electron. That's why it's in group one with all the alkali metals. But because it's so close, we just need to get rid of this electron. And if we get rid of this electron, we become 1s2, which is really just helium. That's the point of all ions, to be noble gas-like. So let's try that for magnesium. Magnesium is 1s2. 2s2, 2p6, and then because it's number 12, we go to 3s2. Hopefully by now, this is getting a whole lot easier than it was when you first saw it. If we want to take away the noble gases, here's one and here's one, so let's do neon, which is the first 10, and 3s2. So just looking at that, what needs to happen to be like neon? we need to get rid of these two. So this would now be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. We got rid of these. But in the end, the whole goal is if we got rid of these two, it's easier to show in noble gas core configuration that we became the end. So as you do the metal examples, take away electrons, you're gonna find a noble gas. Cobalt's gonna be tricky. That's a curved ball because it's transition metal. So in that one, just make sure that you take away from the 4s2 first, then dig into the 3d electrons. But I'll save that one. That's a good uh, teaser. Let's do one more that's negative, and then we'll look at some questions. So nitrogen, 1s2, 2s2. We stop here. We're really we need to keep going. We have uh, 2p3. So two, four, three makes seven. Nitrogen's number seven. So when this happens, uh, take away the noble gas, we have helium, and what's left over? 2s2 and 2p3. So we could take away five, that would be nitrogen plus five, that's a lot of work. Or we could just fill this three into a six. And it turns out that's exactly what nitrogen wants to do. It loves a negative three because it knows its goal in life is to be a noble gas and losing five is tough. Gaining three, just like gaining three pounds, that's pretty easy. So if we gain three pounds, or in this case, three electrons, we're gonna be 1s2, 2s2, but now add three, we get 2p6, which is also just neon. So for all but cobalt, you should have noble gases for their ions. And that's the goal for elements is to be ions that make them feel noble like those gases. So let's go back to the questions. I'll give you a chance to wrap up this now. All right, so question number one is going to ask you the difference between atomic number and mass number. Just remember that atomic number is our top number on our periodic table, that is protons. But mass number is all the mass, which is protons and neutrons. The reason we care about that is because lots of students get these two confused. Mass number is protons and neutrons, as mentioned above. But atomic weight is a weighted average of all proton and neutron combinations that exist in nature by some random abundance. So putting that into words is the answer there. For question three, it talks about the fourth energy level. Remember, the easiest way to deal with that is 2n squared. Plug that 4 in there. Just remember PEMDAS, you have to do exponents before multiplication. As you get to question 4, remember that there are sections. So this section here, because we're bringing helium over where it belongs. You have that section in here. You have this kind of square section over here. And then you have 
this section underneath, label notes. And for this one, just count the boxes. There's a maximum number here, here, and here that will answer those questions. And that's just counting the boxes across for each of those respective sections. Number five says, which noble gas does the potassium ion tend to be like? Well, potassium likes a plus one. So if you look at potassium, but you remove one electron and move left in the periodic table, where does it take you? It's either going to be argon or krypton. Number six says, what if you're oxygen? Well, oxygen likes the oxide negative two ion. So if you have negative charge, you're going to move to the right. When you move two boxes to the right, do you land on the honor arba? And that'll answer that. Number seven says, if you're a halogen, what makes you so special? So find the halogens, they're in this family here. What's so special about that family when it comes to electron configuration? Think about the S and P electrons and the ones specifically that are on the outside, the Roman numeral. Lastly, and most importantly, what does it mean to be a noble gas? What makes them so noble? What makes them so unreactive? Why do other elements want to be like them? Why is that magic number eight so important? And what does it mean for their configuration? And this gives you a tremendous amount of practice on a very tough concept for our week three and some of our week two chapters. See you next time.